Welcome back to my channel. My name is Janet and I'm a veterinary surgeon based in the UK. I have been in clinical practice for over four years and I've always knew that I would want to take the US exams to have the option to work there at some point in the future. I shared a vlog a few months back about me studying for the BCSC and I have received a few questions of some of you that are interested in doing this as well. Now, I know that there's not a lot of information out there online in regards to the process of qualifying to work in the US as a vet. So I thought I would share what I know and what I've done so far and the steps that I've had to take just to make it hopefully a little bit easier. The first thing that you will need to do is to register with the ECFVG. Now that stands for the Educational Commission for Foreign Veterinary Graduates, and it is the certification program through which you will need to go in order to become qualified for working in the US. And the way that they work is they have a four step system. The first one is really simple. Um, aside from the painful amount of money that you need to pay to register, it is just providing the proof of graduation documents and uh, just proof of who you are. So that one's quite easy. It does include also proof of clinical practice. So you need to have done a dog ovarian hysterectomy and you need to have done four other minor, I think it's four or it might be five uh, minor aseptic procedures. So maybe like a wound stitch up, uh, toe amputation. Um, there's a few others, but things like dentals, for example, don't count. So that's just something that you need to provide as well. However, that does not need to be provided during step one. So you can move on to step two prior to having finished that. Just because you don't need that practical experience until you go on to do step four. So it is included in step one, but you don't need it then. Just hopefully that helps you a little bit. Step two is a English exam. So if English is not your first language, particularly if you haven't graduated from high school, from an English speaking country, then you will need to do this. And I say that because I'm English, but I graduated school in Spain. So unfortunately, I did have to take this exam, despite the fact that I uh, am English and English is my first language. It is something that I think if you are not very, very competent in English, then you will need to study for a little bit. It is not the easiest exam ever. So, and I say that as an English person, keep that in mind. You will be fine, but you may need to study for it. Once you have passed your English exam, you can move on to step three. So either say you've already done your English exam and it's typically with some, a program like IELTS or TOEFL. If you've already done it, you need to register with the ECFVG within two years of doing that. Otherwise you'll have to do it again. And who wants to do that twice? So that is also something to bear in mind. Once you have completed step two, you can move on to the basic clinical and sciences exam. So that is going to be your first main veterinary exam. And that is the one where it covers a lot of different topics, kind of the way you would have had it at university in your first few years. So anatomy, surgery, physiology, pathophysiology, pharmacology, toxicology, those are the kind of breakdown of subjects that you will have. You need to pass every single section, otherwise you don't pass the full exam. So it's not like if you're really good in one area, you can afford to fail another one. No, you have to unfortunately pass all of them. And the way that I studied for this was through Zuku Review. So I didn't use anything else. I didn't use any other books or any other kind of study material because I know some of you have asked me about it. There is the other program called Vet Prep that you can use, I believe, for the BCSE as well, but you'll need to double check that for yourself. I know that you can use it for the NAVLE. Uh, and I think they are, for the most part, pretty similar. It's just lots and lots and lots of practice, multiple choice questions, similar to how you would have it in your exams. So I found that really helpful whenever you would click on a question, whether that's you got the answer correct or you got it wrong, you would get a little pop-up and it would show you and describe why that answer is that way and why it isn't, for example, some of the other options. And that's how I found the most enjoyable way to study and the most effective. That's why I didn't feel like I needed to use any other material. And it's not something that I really realized until I had signed up for Zuku, just because if you haven't used it before, you wouldn't know that that's how it works. 
you may want to use other books and you may want to use other study material but I find that using a lot of different study material guides can actually become quite complicated and it's just a personal preference so you do you but that's what I did the way that I broke down doing the actual study process and I did share it in um, my study with me vlog it is breaking down each topic seeing how many questions there are so for example if surgery had 150 questions I would write that I'm currently at zero out of 150 and I would need to complete that just so that I have a little bit of an idea of how far I'm going how fast I'm studying and am I on track or not with the current schedule that I've given myself. I would also try and set myself a daily schedule of how many questions I want to accomplish a day. You get the whole program divided into study mode and exam mode. Personally, I found it best to go through the whole study mode, get all those questions correct, and then move on to the exam mode. There are about 2000 questions uh, in total. And if you do them both in study mode and both in exam mode, you'll get through them twice. However, when you get a question wrong, it gets put back in the pot. So say I gave myself a goal of doing 100 questions today. I would need to do more than 100 questions in order to get 100 questions correct. Say your current success rate is 50%. I did 100 questions, I got 50 correct, I got 50 wrong, which means I would need to do another 100 in order to get another 50 correct to have 100 in total. I hope that makes sense. In terms of the time frame, I gave myself two months to study for this, but I was working the first six weeks. The last two weeks I took completely off and I did nothing but studying. But prior to that, it was mostly weekends and any days that I had off. That is probably the minimum amount of time that I would recommend taking personally. But again, like you might have retained a lot more from university, bearing in mind I graduated a little while ago. So it really is just what you think is going to work the best. If you fail, it's not the end of the world. You can always retake it. One of the things to keep in mind with the BCSC is that you can do it all year round, but the NABLA you can only do twice a year. So when you do schedule your BCSC, say you wanted to take the NAVLE next, which is the North American Veterinary Licensing Exam, and that is what all American veterinary graduates have to take before they can practice. If you wanted to do that one, after the BCSE, which is an option, and I'll talk to you about that in a little bit, then you may want to schedule it in a way that works. I took my BCSE in August, and it meant that I was too late to then apply for the NAVLE by the time I got my results, which can take up to four weeks. So had I realized this sooner, I actually probably would have tried to do my BCSE maybe in July or June, and then I would have been able to take my NAVLE in December. As it stands, I am currently scheduled to do it in the March, April window. So it is fine, but I would have liked them to be closer together. That's my personal preference. I was worried I wouldn't pass the first time and I think that's why I just didn't really factor it in enough, but it is maybe something to plan for. Don't plan to fail, that is not a way to go. Once you have passed your BCSE, then you can either go on to step four, which is the clinical practical exam. And that is again, part of the ECFEG program. That is kind of the way that they structure it, but you are allowed after the BCSE to go on to doing the NABLE, which isn't actually part of the ECFEG. You get that kind of booked in through a different program. So you need to book your NABLE through ICVA. So it's ICVA, I'll leave a link below and the ECFVG will send confirmation that you have passed your BCSC and you are now eligible to take the NAVLE through the ICVA. You need to allow yourself enough time for that process to happen and for them to send all your relevant details through as well. I chose to do it this way, A, because money, uh, the practical exams are expensive. It's also carried out in the US very limited amount of days, uh, a year that you can book it in for. And I just felt that having all the written exams done means I can then completely focus on practical and it just divided it better for me. Plus, now that I've started studying for the NAVLE, I actually find that there is some overlap with the BCSC material and questions that you need to know for the NAVLE, which is why it's totally the way that I would recommend doing it. 
especially things like equine and ruminant diseases, because I'm a small animal vet and I don't work in those fields, retaining that information to quickly go on and do the navly is what I think a good idea. Obviously, when I go on to do the practical, I think I'll need to spend some time in with equine vets uh, and maybe farm vets to have a little bit better of an idea for my practical. That is the downside of having graduated four years ago. However, the big, big advantage of having graduated a few years ago is that a lot of the case-based questions are easy for me. And I say that in terms of the feline and canine sections, because that's what I work with every single day. So there are a lot of them that I don't feel I need to go out of my way to study for, because I already know most of the answers. There will be some questions that I'm getting wrong, but I can logically appreciate why <laughs> they're wrong. Uh, and that I found to be really helpful. So the Navle, I studied the same way. I'm doing it exactly the same way. I'll leave a little blurb up, up above so that you can see. I have currently finished canine. I'm currently working through feline. I like to get each section done as I go. Initially, I was doing cross species, which is why it's a little bit mixed. But uh, yeah, I, I like that. And I like to see the percentage of where I'm at. So I'm currently at 39%, which is not even halfway through the study mode. So I need to get a little bit of speed on <laughs> to get that done. And then I can, once I've finished my study mode, I will move on to exam mode. But this is kind of how I like to do it. I've even given myself a little bit of a schedule. So for example, if I wanted to get the 3,300 questions that there are in the Navli pot, in 30 days done, I would need to get 111 questions correct daily. Bearing in mind that I am currently an intern, so doing 111 questions correct daily is going to be challenging, but I am taking almost two weeks off prior to my Navli again to study only <laughs> exclusively um, rather than have to work as well. That's again, something that I will tweak as I go. Uh, once I have a little bit of a better idea of finishing the study mode, I can move on to the exam mode, but I'm definitely not there yet. In conclusion, I would say that my biggest, biggest study tip is to A, create a schedule, but B, if you can get some clinical practice done prior to taking the BCSE, get it done. If you can only do six months, that's amazing. Six months to a year, I think will be a massive, massive help. If you do a little bit more, it's only going to benefit you. It's not really going to hinder you, but you are going to have to bear in mind that you may forget certain things like equine and bovine or poultry. And that's just the way it goes. You're not going to be able to remember everything. You might work in mixed practice, in which case you see a bit of everything. And that would probably be the most helpful. But for me, bovine exotics, you know, that sort of those different species, it's just not something I see. So I did have to study for that. So it was really helpful to have at least some of the topics be a little bit easier. Also anesthesia and surgery, because you do use it a lot in clinical practice. It made a lot of the questions easier. Some of them, despite working in general practice, I did not know the answer to like all the different surgical instruments. It's just really not something that I had covered very well at university. I hope you found this video helpful and you now have a little bit of a better understanding of how to go about taking all these exams. It's a bit of a long process. I think it can be as long or as short as you want it to be, or you can make it be depending on work, depending on money, because it's not cheap, then it is just, it's, it's a process. But if you have any questions, leave them below. If I can answer them, I will. And good luck. If you've already done your Navle and your CPE and you have any tips, please leave them below because I'm sure not only me, but other people will benefit from them as well. Or even if you've done the BCSC and you have some different tips to what I've said, then it would be really lovely to hear that. And hopefully other people can benefit from reading those in the comments as well. And I hope to see you in my next video.